the grandfather of somebody in the room tonight. So I'm just going to acknowledge Aisha Gray Henry. Because Aisha Gray Henry is the eighth direct descendant of Patrick Henry. And she became a Muslim many, many years ago. Patrick Henry started the revolution by saying, give me liberty or give me death. It's a famous speech. That started the revolution. So, so we, <laughs> now, she doesn't find any problem with what her grandfather said and, and Islam. She doesn't find a problem with that because although Islam is focused on spiritual freedom more than it is on political freedom, it also recognizes the importance of political freedom because people yearn to be free. The Afghanis yearn to be free. The Iraqis yearn to be free. Egyptians, all across the board, human beings desire freedom. And if a government becomes oppressive or tyrannical, according to Cromwell, that disobedience to tyrants is obedience to God. Disobedience to tyrants is obedience to God. That started the, the, the Great Revolution in England. You see, so allegiance has limits. And when you are being tyrannized to such a degree, at a certain point, there's breaking points. People break. People break. When you have a country that has a financial mafia that is robbing this population blind and then rewarding that financial mafia by giving them billions of dollars, billions of dollars of our money and our children and our children's children's money. These people that robbed Goldman Sachs, they were the heads of these Corporations, Goldman Sachs, Lehman Brothers, AIG. Just look what happened. And then the very same people that brought this line, that are always talking about unregulated markets and free enterprise and don't mess with the markets, suddenly it becomes capitalism when it's profit, socialism when it's loss. But most of these people out here didn't get bailouts. We have foreclosures all over the, the state of California. These people did not get bailouts. You see, so when Paulson, Henry Paulson, can sell his stocks for $491 million tax-free because President Bush said that, gee, we want people not having to pay taxes if they're going to serve the government when they sell off their interest that might have a conflict of interest, half a billion dollars tax-free, and these are the types of people that are running the Secretary of Treasury, and this is a representational government? Who are they representing? They're not representing people in East Oakland. They're not representing people in Harlem. They're not representing people in South Chicago. Who are they representing? So this country is a country that has a history of dissent. Now, they used to call dissenters traitors, and they used to hang them. But when I was a kid, we read uh, an essay that was called Civil Disobedience, written by Henry David Thoreau. That's what I read when I was in high school. Civil Disobedience which was about the, the constable fact that anyone with any moral compunction at a certain point has to say, enough is enough. This is not right, and I cannot do that. Like Bartleby the Scrivener, who said, I prefer not to. I'm just not going to sign these documents for Wall Street anymore. This country needs civil disobedience. Really, we need civil disobedience. As a Muslim, I'm an American. You can't take that away from me. I'm a natural born American. I have four direct ancestors that fought in the Revolutionary War. Daniel Copeland, who's one of my grandfathers, was awarded in that war. He was an officer in the Continental Army. So that, that flowed in my blood. Irish people that fought the British for a long time. No, I come from a people that stand up for their rights. And that's supposedly what I was taught as a child what America was about. That's the America I want 